This video will help you prepare to do a lab where you'll study the chemical reaction between aluminum metal and copper 2 chloride dihydrate. Watch for key concepts and vocabulary that are written in this color. You'll need to know all of that for the lab. Our aluminum will be in the form of aluminum foil and our copper chloride dihydrate in the form of these little blue crystals. The reaction will take place in water. First you'll weigh out a particular amount of the copper chloride dihydrate. You'll notice in this diagram that I've drawn four copper ions and eight chloride ions. Can you see why I'm doing this? It's because the 4 to 8 ratio can be written as a 1 to 2 ratio. And that comes from the fact that our formula tells us that there's one copper ion for every two chloride ions. If copper chloride was a covalent compound, the formula would represent the constituents of a molecule, one copper and two chlorides. But in this case, we have an ionic compound. And it's important to note that ionic compounds form crystals and the formula gives the simplest whole number ratio of the ions not how many would be in one particular particle. How about the water embedded in the crystal? To make my diagram accurate, how many should I add? If you said eight, you were correct. So let's put them into the diagram as well. And now we'll put the copper chloride dihydrate into the water. So what's going to happen? The copper chloride dissolves in the water. Now if copper chloride were a covalent molecule, the, what you'd end up with is a whole bunch of little molecules swimming around in the water. But in this case we have an ionic compound. So what does that mean? Well, dissolving causes an ionic compound to dissociate which means to break apart into its constituent ions. So we now have a bunch of copper ions and a bunch of chloride ions swimming around in the water. The water that was embedded in the copper chloride crystal will just add to the rest of the water. Because the copper chloride dihydrate is dissolved in water, we write it this way in a chemical equation with the AQ. The AQ means aqueous, which is to say it's dissolved in water. And now that the ions are dissociated, they're ready to react. Now we'll add the aluminum. We're going to use aluminum foil and we're going to tear it up into small pieces. Can you say why? Well, of course, it's to increase the surface area so we can increase the rate of the reaction. As soon as you add the aluminum, you're going to feel a lot of heat being emitted from the beaker and you're going to see a lot of bubbling as well. Are the bubbles steam? Or are they a different gas? Only further experimentation could tell. So we'll classify this reaction as exothermic. So that tells us what's going to happen at the macroscopic level. Now let's look at the microscopic level. The reactants can't react together in any old way. They have to follow particular ratios. So in this case, we see that it takes two atoms of aluminum to react with three units of copper chloride dihydrate. This allows us to write what we call the molar ratio, which in this case then would be two moles of aluminum to three moles of copper chloride dihydrate. We could just as well have written that as three moles of copper chloride dihydrate to two moles of aluminum. These two quantities are perfectly matched, so if we used these amounts of the reactants, we would find that they both completely react and get used up at the same time. On the other hand, if we had extra of one of the reactants, we would say that that reactant was in excess. So at the end of the reaction, there would be some left over. The other reactant, which will run out first, and thereby stopping the reaction, will, as we say, limit the reaction. So we call the other reactant the limiting reactant. You'll notice that the products also get produced in specific amounts. And this is represented by the coefficients in our chemical equation. 
if you count all the atoms, you'll see that they're exactly the same number of each type of atom on both sides of the equation. That means that we have what's called a balanced chemical equation. In this lab, we're particularly interested in the relationship between the amount of aluminum that we start with and the amount of copper that we end up with. We can represent this relationship by writing two moles of aluminum per three moles of copper, or we could write it as three moles of copper to two moles of aluminum. These are also called molar ratios. It's really important that you learn what they are. And one other thing, Notice that the aluminum chloride produced has an aqueous designation. The chloride ions were already dissolved, but now the aluminum metal is also dissolved. And note that aluminum ions in solution have no color. The copper, which had previously been in ionic form, is now in neutral form and therefore becomes solid. We say that the copper precipitates from the solution. That means that it comes out of the solution. The copper could also be called a precipitate. You won't see a chunk of copper metal. Instead, it will precipitate out as a powder. Next, we'll filter the powder out by using a funnel and some filter paper. After that, we'll weigh the copper. And finally, we'll compare what we get with what we predicted by a stoichiometry calculation. And now review the lab handout for more specifics, and make sure that you know all vocabulary from this video.